The one benefit of royalties is they don't expire and they don't have holding costs. You know, this is a silly anecdote here, but it's a little easier to go from 600 million to 1.2 billion than 10 billion to 20 billion. So we see growth just uh, through our own portfolio as our underlying operators are expanding their production or putting new mines into production. So we see significant growth there. I think the one thing that, that we're most attractive is the revenue per share. We've added value uh, on cash flow per share, revenue per share, asset value per share uh, in terms of how our analysts view us. So in terms of the per share met metrics, I think that's where we're most excited about. Hello and welcome to our viewers on Crux Investor here today with Dan Flaherty, he's the CEO of um, Mavericks Metals, your royalty company. You're in London. Why are you over here? Uh, we're doing some marketing on the back of a recent transaction to be announced in December. Fantastic. Okay. Yes. Well, look, why don't we kick with a one minute summary for everyone new to this story and then I'll pick up some questions. Great. Well, first of all, good morning and thank you for having me on. Excited okay. to, uh, to be here today. But Mavericks is a precious metals royalty company. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a market cap of approximately 600 million US. Mm -hmm. We have 100 royalties and streams. 14 of which are cash flowing to Mavericks and predominantly gold. Fantastic, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you've had quite a good year, but we're going to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start off? So what, what is a royalty company? Again, for yeah. people new to this, because it's, it's, yeah. it's understood really well in the States, not yeah. so much in Europe. Okay. Well, for the royalty companies, so the royalties are uh, give the right to receive a fixed percentage of the revenue of a mine. Mm -hmm. So it's on the top line revenue numbers as opposed to having that very specific capital and operating cost exposure that the direct operating companies have themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's you know top line revenue based model. Okay, so they, but there's, there's, there's royalties and that's, then there's stream. That's right. So, so what I just described yeah. was a royalty. So a yeah. stream uh, is the right to purchase gold or silver or any other metal mm -hmm. uh, from a mine at a defined cost. Uh, right. So for example, we have one uh, paying stream in gold, which is the La Colorado Gold Stream. We mm -hmm. have the right to purchase 100% of the life of mine gold at oh. a fixed cost of 650 per ounce. So no matter what the gold price is or what the operating costs are or what the capital costs are, uh, we have the right to hit, uh, purchase that gold at a fixed cost. That's that's, that's quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically, it's a long annuity stream it's of cash flow, right? At a significant discount to the, the current gold price. I couldn't help notice, but you know, you've got multi, you've got over a hundred yeah. of, of, of these deals mm -hmm. structured. Okay, um, are they all the same? Do you structure them? Is it the same piece of paper every time? How do you go about structuring a deal? Actually, no, they're very unique. Right. Each transaction is a little bit different, and each royalty or stream is a little bit different, and they can be tailored to the certain uh, situation, uh, our operating partner's needs, the jurisdiction that we're in. So it is very uh, much uh, you know tailored to the certain uh, transaction needs. Right. Your backgrounds, your you come from the finance world. That's right. I was, uh, spent a lot of time doing investment banking, predominantly right. mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. uh, in the mining sector, uh, predominantly on royalties and streams. Right. So if we, so if we look at the, the structure of some of these deals, mm -hmm. are you bringing some of the finance uh, knowledge into what you've set up here? Because I think some of the streaming mm -hmm. companies we've talked to, or yeah. sorry, the royalty companies we've, yeah. we've talked to, they seem to have a literally a template approach yeah. to this. It's the, it's the <laughs> same deal as the last deal as the last deal. Yeah. And, but how are you looking at it when you're targeting these deals? Well, I think over time, uh, the royalty and streaming sector has evolved. Um, right. Whereas it's not just necessarily the same cookie cutter transaction. They're right. each being tailored to transactions. And if we look at um, you know, the formation of Mavericks, you know, our chairman, Jeff Burns, the CEO of Pan American Silver for 12 years, 40 years operating experience, very much technical focus. And being able to pair that with my background, which is on, you know, structuring these transactions as an advisor, it's been very complimentary as Mavericks has kind of grown. That's the bit that interests me, okay? Yeah. So you, you look at, you know, people coming from a technical perspective yeah. in terms of geology yeah. and <laughs> diligencing yeah. the projects, yeah. and a finance guy, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know, the world, we, we used to do structured finance yeah. too. So yeah. you're coming in and you've got a different set of eyes. Yeah. Do you think you've made a, the product better yeah. as well, a result? All aspects are, are important. The geology right. is very important, the technical side, but as is the finance side. So I think we have been able to, to have a highly complementary um, team put together that has, I, I think, uh, you know, done some very interesting transactions. You, well, you certainly have. Yeah. Um, but w with the end game of reducing risk from your side, yeah. Yeah, which is what you're focused on, yeah. and, I, and I guess also looking at it technically and understanding yeah. Yeah. should you be getting to the deal in the first place. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, our goal is to provide shareholders with very attractive leverage to gold that's diversified against yeah. a number of assets and a number of good assets with good operating partners in good mining jurisdictions.
Yeah, without the exposure to the capital expenditure, exactly, etc. Exactly. So you're you're taking your money off the top uh, yeah. line when the companies get into production, though. Right? That's right. So can we talk about your portfolio? Certainly. How do, how does that break down? Because you've got producing, development, exploration, right? Yeah. What's the percentages that you're, yeah. you're looking at? Yeah. So we have 100 total royalties and streams, yep. uh, 14 of which are paying. Mm -hmm. And with respect to the non-producing assets, we actually have a very good mix from near-term production, mm -hmm. medium-term production, as well as some royalties on assets that are very large but are longer-term outs. But it gives us that nice balance from immediate cash flow, near-term, medium-term, and long-term, as I just mentioned. So how many of these things fall over? Pardon me? How many of these deals fall over? Like you, know, you, you, give, you give a company some money, <laughs> yeah. they say they're going to get into production, yeah. and then they don't. Uh, well, we haven't, uh, that hasn't happened to Mavericks yet. You've been going three and a half years, I hope <laughs> so, not, I hope not. Yeah. But you're, you factor it in, you expect yeah. that some will. Yeah, I mean, ideally that's, uh, uh, again, that hasn't happened to us, so we've been fortunate right. on that, yeah. that basis. Our focus has been more on assets that are either immediately cash flowing right now or with a clear path to production. So we haven't actually had a large focus uh, on structuring individual transactions that are, you know, five plus years out. So we haven't run into that situation because of okay. partly because of our strategy. Right. Uh, but that being said, we have been able to complement the back end of our portfolio uh, through the acquisition of a couple portfolios that had those pre-existing royalties that were already already created. Right. Okay. So you, maybe it's, now's the time to talk about some of your shareholders. Yeah. <laughs> you have some big names in there. No, it's, uh, you yeah, know, we've been very happy with the shareholder base that's, uh, that we've assembled. I, it's, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so, let, but let's start from day one, three and a half years ago. You're relatively young. Yeah. Your market cap is 600 plus bucks mm -hmm. US. That's impressive. And we'll yeah. get on to making yeah. money in a second. But day one, you started with what? So our initial shareholder was Pan American Silver. That was the inaugural acquisition where we acquired a portfolio from Pan American Silver. They came in onto our register in a very meaningful way. Chairman Ross Beattie of Pan American Silver, supportive of the transaction. That's what really launched Mavericks in 2016. So what was the plan? We need day one, what was the plan? The plan was to grow the portfolio. And we knew right. when we first came out, we had 13 royalties and streams in total, two of which were paying. We knew that we needed to add scale and diversification to make it a more attractive vehicle. So where they go for you, there's some huge royalty company, especially gold and silver in the States. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, uh, so these are billion, multi-billion dollar companies. Mm -hmm. Why did you think you could come in? Why was there room for you? Well, I think where we are in a size range is there are a number of assets that are very meaningful to a Mavericks, yeah. uh, but don't necessarily move the needle for some of the larger players in the sector. Okay, so you started small? That's that right, we're small, below the radar assets that, uh, that we were able to acquire in terms of royalties and streams. That really gave us that uh, that lift after we got launched. Okay, so let's let's come back to the start. So you got R R Ross Beatty's uh, portfolio <laughs> in day one, yeah. and then how did it build out from there? Well, right after we got launched, and one of the reasons for for Pan American to do this is, you know, they had a number of large operating mines. They right. had these royalties that they owned that they were buried in their portfolio that mm -hmm. they weren't getting any value for. So the initial concept was to take these royalties, put it into a separate vehicle. Right. Uh, daylight that vehicle and surface some value that wasn't being recognized. Uh, and that was how we launched. Not long after we launched, we connected with Goldfields, uh, mm -hmm. a, a large gold producer based in, in South Africa that had a number of royalties in Australia. Uh, mm -hmm. Goldfields was not getting any value for these royalties in their portfolio. Okay. Uh, they saw the work that, that we had done in putting the infrastructure and the board and the team yeah. in place to do that. And we were able to acquire their portfolio for equity and Mavericks. Right. Uh, so they came on, uh, you know, believed what we were going to do was kind of create some value and, and put their royalty portfolio and combine it with ours. Okay. And then you've been building it up since then. You've got a few more names. That's right. So in 2017, that was that transaction was December 2016. Mm -hmm. 2017, we acquired four more royalties in, in three separate transactions. And then 2018, we had another transformational acquisition. Mm -hmm. It was an acquisition of 51 royalties from mm -hmm. Newmont Mining. Mm -hmm. uh, Newmont Mining is now on our registry as, as a 25% shareholder. Right. Um, you know, so you know, we're very you know, happy to have them endorse the strategy um, and have us steward their royalty portfolio. Right, so they, these are, you've got some significant equity holders whose portfolios have come into yours. And what, what do you mean by you can shine out? What, what, what are you able to do that they weren't? You're going to shine a light on, on their portfolio and they couldn't? What does that mean? Uh, well, in terms of, you know, these are large operating companies uh, with many operating mines, and that's the focus of investors in, in Newmont and Pan American right. that, that were barely aware that these royalties even existed. Uh, right. So being able to put it into a smaller vehicle 
uh, that's very focused on precious metals royalties and growing that vehicle. Yeah. Uh, I think there was some some interest and appeal. I, not, not, not that I can speak for them, but certainly right. it's uh, it's worked out well so far for, for all the parties that have taken equity um, in, in Mavericks. Right. Okay, so when, when you've, I've seen this in the oil and gas space, yeah. but whenever companies take on large portfolios, yeah. Will buy large portfolios yeah. from you know other majors. Yeah. You get some good stuff, yeah, <laughs> and you get some not so good stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you go about assessing? Okay, 50, yeah. like, let's, 50, let's yeah. take a, the, the, your, your latest portfolio, yeah. 50, 51 assets, yes. right? You have to go in and assess all of those. You yeah. have to take the good with the bad. Yeah. Was there any bad? So I think what's the, the important part is is to make sure it's all priced appropriately. Right. Uh, so there is a number of royalties in there. Uh, right. Very attractive. Uh, the one benefit of royalties is there are there's no holding costs to having a royalty. Unlike a mining property, it's where you good. have you know an annual holding cost, yep. there are no holding costs. So this is uh, again a benefit of royalties is they are life of mine. Right. Uh, they don't expire and they don't have holding costs. But do you ever flip the one, some that you think well this isn't for us doesn't fit our profile that you talked about earlier? Uh, that hasn't been uh, a strategy actually for the the, the Newmont transaction. There are some very small royalties in there that were on. Uh, uh, mine or operations that we wouldn't necessarily target. For example, right. we're predominantly gold and silver. There were some royalties on there on granite and uh, concrete. Uh, right. That, uh, but the reality was they were very small. Uh, so we're now 95% gold and silver, 4% uh, copper, lead and right. zinc. So these were ones that were in the portfolio. We're just very, very minor and, and weren't valued at, at so a high value. There's no necessarily cost to you to That's keep right. those, but there could be some chunk of change if you flip them it's upside to someone else where it's, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's upside optionality, I would say. Right, okay, but mm. not something you're doing at the moment. You're not looking at your, your other stuff to do. No, no, we're, we're definitely focused on precious metals. Right, so I mean, just to talk about that. So you, you inherit all of these, these royalties, each yeah. with different terms and conditions attached. Yeah. Can you change those terms and conditions? Do you look to change those terms and conditions or do you just, you, you take what you're given? Uh, for pre-existing royalties, uh, you know, you, you do inherit how what the contract is. Right. Uh, with that being said, um, you know, we have very good relationships with our operating partners. So to right. the extent that it's mutually beneficial uh, to change a contract, we can do that on a commercial discussion. Okay, but both sides need to agree that that's yeah. something they, that they want to do. That's right. Okay, and and what are the conditions? Why would you want to do that? You're, you're saying, well, it. If you get into, if you're not in production, but you can get in early production, or I mean, what, are, what are the, uh, accelerating production right. is one. Uh, so you can encourage uh, companies to get yeah, into production. Exactly. Okay, I mean, for, our, for both us and our operating partners, um, the real win is maximizing the underlying value of the mine. So if there's something in that contract, whatever it may be, whether it's on one deposit and not the entire uh, several deposits, you can actually lower royalty and spread it over more of their either other assets or other parts of the same deposit. That's fascinating. Yeah. Can we talk about that a second? Because yeah. I just want to understand it because yeah. you talk about the, the bells and whistles that you yeah. can attach and that's the bit that you're, yeah. you've come in to do, right? Yeah. So you, you take a royalty or you create a royalty which is on a specific piece of land mm -hmm. and what, what, what are the terms and conditions, you know, what are the variables yeah. you know, when you're writing a contract or trying to negotiate a contract? Uh, well, one thing when we're writing a new contract is we absolutely want to maximize our exposure to the area of influence. You know? Right. So in terms of a deposit, it can grow over time. Yeah. So we're not limiting it just to the existing resource. We want to make sure that we have, uh, you know, exposure to you know a, a pretty significant land package. And if we look at the royalties and streams in our portfolio, mm -hmm. you know, that's 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 the case. It right. Is you know we do have. Uh, you know, life of mine to, you know, where we want the, the assets to be. Now, we, with that being said, we do have a couple of royalties that we inherited where it only covers a portion of the deposit. Right. But for the core assets in the portfolio, you know, we have the key area of influence. It's interesting. So we, we interviewed a company called Jubilee Metals. They do tailings. Right? Yeah. Um, but they've sort of stepped into a similar scenario where there was a royalty on the assets under the ground. Okay. But nothing above the ground. Yeah. But, you know, so they've, they've come in and said they're going to reprocess, yeah. I think it was PGMs in, the, okay. in, in their case, um, which, which I thought fascinating that that you, 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 you can say, I'm going after all of the gold under the ground, but I don't necessarily want, if there's another commodity under the ground, I can't think what's yeah. nickel or copper under yeah. the ground, I don't necessarily want that. And yeah. you can negotiate that in or out of a deal. Yeah. Is that what, is that what you're looking at? I'll, I'll, I'll give one example. Mm. Um, you know, it's, 
it, we have a royalty on RNC Minerals mm -hmm. Beta Hunt deposit. Yep. Uh, we have 7.5% royalty on the gold, 1.5% wow. on the nickel. <laughs> right. Um, now RNC, they're in their history, they were formerly called Royal Nickel Corporation. Yep. They were looking for nickel. Clues in the name. Uh, yeah. Which is why they, uh, you know, I guess they were, ultimately it was a higher uh, royalty on the gold, which was a right. byproduct at the time to what right. they were looking for as a nickel company. Uh, they had a pretty yeah. uh, exciting discovery in late 2018 mm -hmm. on the gold. <laughs> yep. Uh, and they've been doing very well with that asset, uh, but to the extent that you know there is ever something that makes sense where they go into higher production on the nickel. Yeah. I mean, we're very much gold focused, so. Yeah. But obviously, you know, you can have conversations, and that's I think uh, one of the things we pride ourselves on is having very commercial uh, relationships with our operating partners right. to maximize the value of, of all the money. Right, it's got to work for them. It's got to work exactly. For you. Okay, okay, it's fine. Okay, that's that's a great um, example. Let's talk about some of the numbers from last year. Yeah. You gotta be pleased, right? It was a great year. Right? <laughs> it was a great year, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. So when you, when, what are the headline numbers, numbers for you that you think you're most proud of? Uh, well, in terms of the revenue, we're right around $40 million Canadian. Right. Uh, in terms of gold equivalent ounces, around 24,000 ounces gold equivalent, mm -hmm. uh, attributable to, to Mavericks. Yeah. Uh, substantial growth. I mean, to put that into perspective, in 2016, when we started, our gold equivalent ounces were just over 1,000 ounces. Yeah. So being able to grow that, uh, you know, that was very, very exciting for us. But I think the one thing that, that we're most attractive is the revenue per share. You know, we're not looking at just yeah, growing. It's, it's on a per share basis. We've added value uh, on cash flow per share, revenue per share, asset value per share uh, in terms of how our analysts view us. So in terms of the per share met metrics, I think that's where we're most excited about. I, for, yeah, I, I, I had a look. Um, you, you've got a lot of coverage now. Yeah. I mean, pretty impressive for mm -hmm. a three and a half year old uh, company. So you're obviously doing a lot right in the market, mm -hmm. likes the story. Share price has moved. I saw a funny little bump. Mm -hmm. So just about the time when gold bumped, mm -hmm. in August, so end of August, September mm -hmm. last year, you saw mm -hmm. a bit of a, a peak and then it kind of dropped back down a bit. You had a kind of funny period before Christmas. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, why, why was that? Uh, this is in uh, in 2018? Uh, 2019. Oh, 2019. Well, yeah. we announced a transaction <laughs> on, right. in early December that people were uh, were pretty excited about. Uh, so I think as people kind of understood that transaction, this was an acquisition of uh, 23 royalties from, from Kinross. Right. Uh, Kinross has now joined our registry as a 9% shareholder. And there are some exciting assets in there. So I think uh, once, uh, once that market kind of started to understand what was in that portfolio, I think we got a nice little bump. So I think... Uh, you know, that was, uh, we were pretty excited about that. Yeah, okay. Um, you're quite small yep. in royalty terms for the US. That's right. You're a big company, <laughs> but in royalty terms, you're quite, you're quite small. You're one of the, one of the, the smaller guys, um, the big guys, I say, you know, the seven, eight, 10, 12 billion right. bucks. And you've got, a, you've got a view to presumably joining them, <laughs> right? But growth doesn't come easy. <laughs> So you, you're really tightly held register. That's really, right. you have some great names. Yeah. Okay. So I imagine, and you've got access to, to cash as as well. And you know, you, once you find targets to that you've identified targets, I guess yeah. you'll call on that cash. So that's fine. But how do you keep the growth story going? Yeah. yeah. I think actually the advantage is our size. Right. Being at that smaller size, there are well, just as a, a function of the industry, there's a lot more fifty million dollar deals available than there are one billion dollar deals. Right. So you're still um, under the radar. Yeah. So we're under the radar. Okay. We have a lot of opportunities where, on a percentage basis, uh, are very meaningful to Mavericks. And you know, this is a silly anecdote here, but it's a little easier to go from six hundred million to one point two billion than ten billion to twenty billion. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so in terms of where we're at, uh, I very much like uh, kind of the size range where we're focused right now that we can still continue to grow meaningfully. So, but like, you know, there's a lot going on in the world. Okay, right. and I think you talk quite clearly in your um, PowerPoint about mm -hmm. safe jurisdictions, so That's North right. America, mm -hmm. South America, mm -hmm. Australia, mm -hmm. Africa. How are you feeling about Africa? Well, right now, uh, over 82% of our revenue is coming from Canada, the United States, Australia, and Mexico. Right. And so our core producing assets uh, are very much in, uh, you know, m mining understood geographies. Right. Uh, we do have a royalty on Endeavor Mining. Endeavor, yeah. Uh, Burkina Faso. In the, the Karma Mine. Yeah. And I think one of the ones that when we looked at there is Endeavor Mining is a tremendous operator. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's very core if you're going to certain jurisdictions to have very strong operating partners. Yeah. They know the area very well. They've been there for a long time, very successful, multiple operating mines. Mm. And that's something where 
from a Maverick's perspective, you know, gives us comfort uh, mm -hmm. as well. Uh, being a small part of the portfolio uh, with Canada, United States, Australia, and Mexico dominating the revenue, it actually fits in nicely portfolio theory wise. Right, because if you look at because you look at instances like Semaphore, obviously that yeah. was a shocker, um, very uh, unfortunate, tragic. Yes. Um, that makes companies like you nervous, and that just, that's why you're sticking to the safer jurisdictions. I think uh, you know, longer term, um, mm. you know, as we build the portfolio, those you know, mining friendly jurisdiction, mining understood jurisdictions, and safer jurisdictions uh, with um, you know, very long generations of history of law mm -hmm. uh, is, I think, one thing that at least what our investors have told us is attractive to them. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's something that we are looking to provide to our shareholders and our investors. Right. So let's come back to this growth story thing again, because yeah. I know it's easy, as you say, it's easier yeah. to go from your size <laughs> to double it yeah. than it would be from 10 to 20, yeah. 20 billion. But it, you're on a road show effectively. What, a yeah. non-deal road show or a road show? Non-deal road show. Non-deal road yeah. show. Okay. Which for those at home means pretty much the same thing. <laughs> um, the, the imperative for you is to drive your liquidity. Mm -hmm. you know, you got to you got to drive that, and that's yeah. when you've got such big holders and your yeah. stocks and the names you've got are huge. Yeah. People would be very pleased to have those. Yeah. Are they are they going to move and trade out shares and help that liquidity, yeah. or are you going to rely on building up a retail following? What's, yeah. what's your goal? Well, liquidity has been a big focus for us, as you mentioned. Uh, we have those large shareholders. Yeah. Um, so this time last year, if we had this conversation, it would have been a much different conversation. Sure. Uh, so what we did in 2019, really to focus on building the, the retail network as well as mm -hmm. we listed on the New York Stock Exchange American. Yep. We moved from the venture to the TSX. Yep. Uh, those initiatives have been very helpful in increasing our liquidity. Our yep. liquidity is up substantially, uh, sure. you know, year over year, uh, and I think as we continue. To, uh, to build the business and build the capital markets profile, we'll mm -hmm. see that liquidity continue to increase. Why? Just as, as more shares uh, you know, get into the float. Uh, right. I mean, Goldfields, they were uh, a 19.9% shareholder uh, from 2016. In yeah. May of uh, 2019, they did uh, crystallize that position and, and exit their, their share position. Right. Uh, and that, I think, was a big catalyst to getting shares into the float. And I think that share, uh, shares into the float is really, it's, uh, it becomes more very much uh, a momentum type uh, event where the more shares are in the float, the more it gets traded, the more people are attracted to trade it. Absolutely. Uh, and it, it builds from there. Did they liquidate 100% of their position? Uh, they liquidated uh, all of their equity, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's a lot more in the market yeah. at the moment. Yes. That's exactly. good news. That's ex yes. Any, any more of the big players going to do a bit more of that? This year? Uh, well, they haven't told us. <laughs> right. Why would they? But, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. we have very good relationships. And we had a very good relationship with, with Goldfields as well. They had right. some large capital projects that they're focused on. So you knew on. that was coming? Oh, uh, yeah. We were, it, wasn't, it didn't surprise us, just given that the uh, attractive development assets that they've been investing in. Mm. Newmont, Pan American, also, uh, they've been very supportive. Uh, they've got very strong balance sheets, which, so, is, a, which is a good thing for us. And yeah. they've, they've also got representatives on our board of Mavericks, uh, right. for both each of Pan American Silver and Newmont. Okay, so let me, ha let me help people at home understand yeah. what that means. So they wanted to liquidate their position. Mm -hmm. They give you a heads up yes. a few days before, a few yeah. hours before. I mean, <laughs> did they give you the chance to put it into institutional hands or did you yeah. say, actually, we want all of that in retail? Yeah. I mean, what yeah. was the conversation like? Well, uh, for starters, we had a great relationship with them. Right. So it was very easy. Um, they were actually approached unsolicited yeah. Uh, by a fund that was looking to get to, to get shares, that ultimately led to a conversation with us. Right. Uh, ultimately led to uh, us contacting a number of funds that had reached out before that right. wanted shares, hadn't been able to get shares. Yep. And this was an opportunity for them to get shares. Okay. Okay. So we kind of most of that went into institutions. Most hands. of that went into institutional hands. Yes. So how are retail going to get more of it? Do you want more retail? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Okay. And you're over here, yeah. you're from over there, <laughs> yeah. so I'm guessing there's a bit of a global story for you as far as you're concerned. Of course, and I think, uh, I think there are natural catalysts as, right. uh, as a business grows for retail shareholders to, to get into the story, for us to broaden our institutional names on our uh, registry. I think uh, you know, without being able to say it's going to be exactly this or exactly that, I think you know, over the course of 2020, we'll be able to, to provide some opportunities for uh, our float to increase. Okay, I think that's... 
That's that's interesting, yeah. Jason. I think people will be interested to see how that plays out. Yeah. And what are the things? You're obviously here in London, right? So yeah. are you going across Europe as well to try and tell this story? Who else are you talking to at the moment? And are you uh, talking to institutions or are you talking to retail? Uh, so last week in, uh, we were in Toronto and New York on yeah. uh, an institutional front. Yeah. Uh, next week there is a conference in Vancouver which is very much retail focused. So it's the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. Uh, yep. We'll be very active there, uh, reaching out, and I think uh, you know, I think people are pretty happy in terms of you know where the gold price is. You know, I yep. think people would still like to see the equities move a little bit more, but uh, For sure. I'd expect a pretty good turnout at that conference. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a good one. Yeah. One of the better ones, I think. A lot of people are going to be there for sure. Yeah. Um, can we talk about? I just want to talk about the risk component yeah. to what you what you do. Now, clearly, mm-hmm. everything you do is about, and well, mm-hmm. most mining mining company, you're not mm-hmm. a mining company per yeah. se, but. You're assessing risk all day, every yes, day. So absolutely. you've got technical under the ground risk, which yeah. of the companies which come onto your portfolio, you got to work out what those what the agreements look like and yeah. what the risks or what it, what you're exposed to. Yeah. Um, but can can we talk about what you think the market risks are for you this year as you try and deliver this growth story? What do you what you, what's the board most concerned with fixing? or putting in place to allow this growth story that you're you're telling everyone? That's an interesting question. Um, The first thing I can say is that uh, as a general comment, we sleep pretty well at night (laughs) in terms of how our portfolio Mm -hmm. is, um, you know, performing right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have 14 uh, cash flowing assets. Not a single asset is contributes more than 15% of our cash flow, uh, which in terms of risk centralization, um, you know, that gives us a lot of comfort. Uh, in terms of, uh, going forward, we very much want to continue to grow the liquidity base, Mm -hmm. uh, and the shareholder base. Uh, that's something that, that is very important to us. Uh, and we have a a significant amount of capital to deploy. So I think the biggest focus would be in terms of where we deploy that is making sure that we're not putting it in too risky of a situation. So I think that would be the biggest focus is what our next deal is and making sure it's a good deal. Yeah, essentially, because when I look at your company, your cash flow, you, you've got, you don't need much cash mm-hmm. flow because your overheads are <laughs> negligible, aren't they? Yeah, you've well, got salary costs and mm-hmm. minimal GNI. No, there's nothing going on, really. Uh, that's right. I mean, our Q3 was 88% cash operating margins you know we have a, a very small team um, yeah so it's it is a high margin business yeah just to remind people that's because you're not spending money on capex or that's opex right. in in mining in perhaps you're, you're taking you're creaming money off the top so so that so that, all that is good news um i mean i, I assume how do you reward yourselves do you, is it based on success of paying royalties yeah. i mean how do you remember it uh it's a balance uh right. well one it's up to uh so we have a compensation committee on the board that mm-hmm. then makes recommendations to that board mm-hmm. uh on a variety of metrics uh mm-hmm. the metrics predominantly are per share metrics mm-hmm. uh um, which as management we very much agree with is, is that's where value is added on a per share basis but mm-hmm. it's across uh, a variety, whether it's um, you know production per share, it's whether it's on you know growing the capital markets profile yeah. and the liquidity and the research coverage from yeah. the analyst community, uh, it is and r- right down to internal controls. Right, you know that's also uh, important. So uh, I think in our um, materials that we have on Cedar and the proxy circuit, we lay out what that scorecard is, and it is over you know four or five separate factors and how okay. that's determined. If you're making money, no one cares, right? Yeah. And I think the biggest thing I can say is insiders own 10% uh, of Mavericks. So the Mm -hmm. insiders are very heavily motivated by kind of the share price and the investor returns and not annual uh, compensation is is keeping that kind of interest aligned with shareholders by that meaningful insider ownership is very important. And when you raise money, it's with the an end goal in sight. So you've got a contract or a portfolio or, yeah. or a deal that you want to do. So, mm-hmm. you know, as soon as you draw down that money, it costs you money, mm-hmm. but you know you're going to be making money. Uh, that's hopefully the plan. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it, again, it's different from mining. So I'm, trying yeah. to, I'm trying to help people understand the difference between investing in a mining company yeah. and investing in a royalty company which just happens to invest in mining assets. That's right. Right? So, you, you're, you're, the cost of your money is negligible compared to a mining company. We do have a very low cost of capital, that's right. Right, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, and, and why, and, and so what is, what is the exposure on, on that money? You say, right, mm-hmm. I'm going to draw down, let's say, mm-hmm. you wanted to put 100 million bucks this year, don't you? That'd be ideal if we could. Right, yeah. okay, <laughs> but you've got to find the assets to do that Absolutely. with, clearly. Absolutely. Uh, assets which make economic sense for yeah. you to do, and you know, yeah. you know, it's important not to get lazy, I guess, <laughs> right? But. There's a time lag between when you give the company the money yeah. and it starts giving yeah. you money back. And that can be, what, 
12 months, two years, three years? What's the, what's the most? I mean, for our uh, for transactions that we've initiated on the streaming fronts, uh, they've all been producing. Uh, right. That, with that being said, we have evaluated assets that are within one to two years from production. Right. Uh, we haven't looked on initiating streams on assets that are five plus years out, right. but we do have royalties on assets that are five plus years out. So I think one of the most attractive parts uh, to the leverage to the gold price that uh, you know that Mavericks and other royalties companies provide mm -hmm. is that in rising gold price environments, and I hope we're going to be in one for a long period of time, so. is the underlying operators invest significant capital in their own assets yeah. for the benefit of their own shareholders. Yeah. But the royalty and streaming companies see the benefit of that investment as well, yeah. whether it's on exploration, whether it's on new mine, production or construction or expansion, you know, we see that benefit in rising gold price environments. So that's the exposure and the leverage that the, the royalty companies provide, while at the same time providing a very high margin, diversified cash flow base. So some downside protection as well as that upside leverage. And for a specific example, we have royalties and streams on 100 assets. Mm. Only 14 of those are paying. So there's 86 assets that in rising gold price invest, envi environments, you know, invest, uh, we'd uh, like to see our operators invest them. So at some point, that yeah. annuity stream of cash is going to mm. come flowing in. Hence, mm. I think that's obviously why royalty companies get such you know, high value. Mm. I, I think that is certainly one of the reasons that people ascribe to that, yes. Yeah, okay. This year, yeah. what are the goals? What are the, what, are the, what are the big goals you're going to... So we produced approximately uh, 24 gold equivalent ounces attributable yeah. to Mavericks in 2019. In 2020, we would expect that to grow organically just mm. uh, through the assets we already have in our own portfolio. Mm -hmm. So we see growth just uh, through our own portfolio as our underlying operators are expanding their production or putting new mines into production. So we see significant growth there. Uh, as you just mentioned, we do have a goal of deploying capital to build a portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very much a big goal of ours, uh, as well as continuing to um, you know, tell the story and get the brand out. We've been so busy with our heads down building yeah. the underlying asset portfolios, you yeah. know, we haven't come and, and done a lot of uh, you know, non-deal roadshows, as yeah. you say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, thanks for telling us that story. Yeah. No, oh, thank it's you. New, very new to us, yeah. new to our, our uh, viewers and subscribers. Yeah. Uh, we'd love a royalty story. Yeah. You know, uh, so do we. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've had a great, great year last year, and yeah. I, you know, thank wish you. you well for this year. Thanks for coming great. and telling us that story. Thank you very much. Appreciate Cheers. that.